Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, today I'd like to finish up this um, torso triangle thing. I don't exactly know what to call it here. Um, this piece right here that kind of begins at the waist and goes up over the shoulders here. Now we've got this in the second layer. So what we can do, I think, is use the scale tool to try and get this uh, flatter. And in doing so, we're going to have to change the pivot point of our selection. So let's work on this. What I want to do is go into vertex mode. And I want to select this point right down here. And I'm going to press Shift S and move the cursor to the selection. And then if I select this entire edge, I can scale from this point by either coming down here and changing the pivot point to 3D cursor, or I can just hit the period key and move the pivot point to the 3D cursor. Now what I want to do is just scale in the X, so I'll just hit S and X and scale in the X from that point until everything's flat, kind of like that. And now I can rotate this back out like that, and they should be a lot more flat. That line of edges should be a lot more flat now. However, if we go back to the first layer, I've pulled it down into the shoulder. So I need to scale in the Z now. So I'll hit S and Z and scale this up like this. And let's go to that front view again. I'll go to the front view. And with just layer 2 selected, I'll take this and kind of rotate it out to where it needs to be. And scale it in the Z, etc. Yeah, something about like this. There we go. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting here, I'm sure. It doesn't look too bad though, but you can see how these points have been pulled out. This part up here is kind of squared off. So I'm going to need to come in here and do a little bit of work. So let me work on that. I do need to move my pivot point back to the median point of the selection. So I'm just going to press control comma and that'll move that back. Let me take a look at it from the side view here. See how it looks compared to the drawing, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I think my character is a little bit forward of this right here. I think if I pulled it back too much farther, it wouldn't line up with the characters. Let me see. Yeah, I can do a little bit of adjustment here, so I'll do that. Now one thing I'm noticing here is that while the shoulder parts are pretty good, they're lined up pretty well, what I do need to do is work on bringing these in. I've got more of a flared line to that piece here. So what I'm going to do is just press Control and click and drag to lasso select. And since this is mirrored, scaling does some strange things here. Even if I scaled in the X, you can see how it kind of collapses around the center of one side. So just like we did with the face, I'm going to select a point in the middle and move the cursor to that point and then move the pivot point to there. Now if I select that area again and scale in in the X, it should scale in from the center of that selection. And I'll just go on up and do the same thing for all of these. So I'll press Control, click and drag an S and X and bring those in. And of course as no good deed goes unpunished, <laughs> as I scaled them in they've now collapsed into the torso. So I'm going to need to come in and pull some of these points out again. And to help with this, I think I'll come down here and turn off this limit selection. And now I can kind of see the ghost image of those points underneath the torso. So that'll help with this.
Now that we have this flared piece pretty much the way we want it, we probably ought to close it off on the inside the same way we did with the gloves so we can't see up into the back of polygons. So if we go into edge mode here and select that edge, what we can do is just hit E and then scale it in just a hair like so. We're probably going to need another edge to hold that. So I'll do that again. I'll hit E and scale in again and now we're going to need to do some work to get these to fit onto the character. So these aren't doing too bad. I'll need to come in here and move these edges out a bit say this one and this one like this and just move this out some like that so it fits a little bit better. In addition I'm going to need to come up here and just kind of individually take these and move them into place kind of like this and back into the character some like that. So I'm going to need to just go through here and each edge or even vertex move them around so they fit the character. Now someone did point out very astutely that currently Captain Quark has no nostrils. So in the next video we'll work on that as well as adding some other details. So I'll see you then. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley-Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.